Hello everyone. So in this video, uh, we'll be looking at the data and some cloud kitchen data uh, using Python. So in my earlier videos, we uh, used the same cloud kitchen data set and analyzed it uh, using different tools like SQL, Tableau, and Excel. And in this video, we'll be looking how to do it using Python. So for this particular video, what we'll be uh, doing is first we'll be installing Anaconda framework, which will install Python and Jupyter Notebook and other UIs for using Python programming language. And then we'll be using two libraries, which is Pandas and Pivot Table JS to analyze the data and uh, compare our results between Excel and Python. Pandas and Pivot Table JS are different libraries. So the first step, what we'll be doing is, uh, I've just searched for Anaconda over here and it goes, uh, I'll just select this URL. And the first thing, what I'll be doing is I'll just click on download. And uh, let me download Anaconda and save it over here. All right, now it's downloaded. I'll just open it. All right, so there's a 64 bit setup. I'll just select the final location. This is the same thing. And add Anaconda to my path environment. Why do I do this? Because if I want to run, suppose they say Anaconda uh, using my command line, then I don't need to go to that exact folder and run the Anaconda. It will basically uh, create an create a synon alias for that uh, particular file. So while installing Anaconda, you can uh, you'll have all the packages installed, such as Python, such as Jupyter Notebook, such as PyCharm, and different UIs which can help you to uh, use Python in different ways. So now after setting up the cache variable, it will set up the base environment. So this will again take some time. So now after taking it some time, it almost takes about 20 minutes to install Anaconda. And once we are done, it's completed. It uh, executes some uh, libraries as well, and then creates some menu user menu option. And we click on next and next and uh, I'll just remove the tick mark and finish. Uh, in the first section of the video, we understood how did we install Anaconda. And uh, this Anaconda software is uh, installing all the different graphical user interfaces where we can use Python programming as a language to script and code. So you can access different uh, graphical user interfaces like Jupyter Notebook, uh, like PyCharm, like RStudio, to use our programming language and different things. So Anaconda will itself install Python uh, graphical user interfaces and all the other similar tools so that you don't have to download those tools separately from other, other places. So now for this purpose, what we'll be doing is we'll be using Jupyter Notebook. So I'll just type Jupyter um, and then click on enter. So when I open Jupyter Notebook, it will open a command line kind of interface. It will run some codes and then it will basically open a Jupyter Notebook in a default uh, browser. If it doesn't open, then either we can copy either of these two URLs in a browser and then comfort, uh, you can use that. Ideally, it will open the simple page where it will you land to the root directory and then we can create a folder. And that. So if you notice, there's an option here as new. And when I open new, I have different option like Python kernel, text file, pool, folder, terminal. So I can do, I can create any of these three things. So what I'll be doing is I'll be creating this in. Uh... So I'll be creating a uh, Python notebook file over here itself. So what I've done, I've created this fi file over here by click clicking on new and then when I click on new, it will open a new tab and it will, all right. So it will open, it opens a new notebook 
uh, file over here. And here, what we can do is here we can rename our code. So let's take Python data analysis. And then we can rename it. Then here we have different cells where we can write our code. And here is different taskbar to do different actions. So here we can basically save and checkpoint the file. Here we can run the cell. So if I want to run, like, let's say print, hello. So if I run, if I have to run this, I can click on shift enter. I can click over here and it will show run the command. If I want to move any, uh, if I want to move any this line above or below, then I can use this to move it above or below. If I, if I have a loop which is running and I want to break that loop and then I can just click on interrupt the kernel. If I want to restart the complete code and run all, all, all together, I can just click on restarting the kernel. So kernel gives me these options. Cell gives me these options to move uh, the cell below. So each of these lines are called cell. If I want to insert any cell above below, I can do that. And for saving, I can click over here. And uh, this opens as a notebook file. And if I want to download this as a Python file or different other formats, then I have these options over here. So in this uh, section, what I'll be doing, I'll be explaining you the code snippets. And uh, then once I've done with that, then I will be running those snippets in the Jupyter notebook. All right, so let me come to the snippet code. All right, so the first thing here, what we'll be learning is uh, how do we import the libraries? So in Python, as you understand, is a programming language where we have to call different libraries. Uh, so here I'll be giving you an analogy where uh, dinner is something which is like a business problem or something you're going to code. A restaurant is basically something like a programming language, which restaurant you choose, it could be Python, it could be R, those are different restaurants which you can choose or Python or programming languages. In that you have different cuisines. So cuisines would be uh, similar to uh, the libraries which you use and the food items under that cuisine would be a function or a, which you will be using from that particular cuisine or from that particular library. Pandas is used for data analysis. So this is a library name. Here, what we are doing, we are writing import pandas as PD. So basically pandas is a library name and PD is a library alias. So that whenever you have to call anything from that particular library, we can use PD instead of pandas. The Excel file contains to a data frame, which is like a temporary Excel file or viewing method where we can create and do different things in uh, pandas. So data is basically, we just given a random name to this particular thing. PD is usually uh, the alias itself. And we're using the function inside this PD library, which is pandas library to read an Excel file. So for reading an Excel file, we use the read underscore Excel function. There are multiple functions uh, inside PD. And for reading an Excel file, we mentioned the location of that Excel file. Here I've just mentioned the name of the Excel file because the Excel file is in the same folder where I've created the Python file. If it is in a different folder, then I have to mention the complete uh, path of the file, Excel file. And then if I have multiple sheets in that file, then I have to mention which sheet name, mention the sheet name, which I have to consider for this data frame. Now, uh, pandas has different uh, ways and different functions to use. So now for displaying the top five rows, I've mentioned data.head. So I'm using data is now data frame. And then if I uh, put a dot or after it, I can use different function, which it has. So head basically gives me the first five rows. And if I mention tail, it will give me the last five rows. So now we'll move to the questions which we had resolved. Uh, we had solved in our earlier Excel file. So let me quickly go to the file over here. So that in the data, we have the order ID, we have the kitchen name, the order date and the prepared date. So if I'm a customer, I have placed an order 
let's say with an order ID this from a location which is near the kitchen wide field. And I place the order on this time and it has took this much time to prepare and it has got over. I have placed that uh, order to a partner, delivery partner, which is partner two. And this is my customer ID, which has been given to me. I have ordered three things. The final bill amount is 175. And the brand name, which is the restaurant brand, which I've ordered to is this brand four. So now this is the kind of data and we have different set of questions, which we are looking here. So we have like, such as most popular item, which partner had the most orders, which brand is most popular, uh, some questions around the time, uh, deliver, uh, the preparation time. So we'll be looking through the questions around these. So the first question here we are trying to answer is more, which is the most popular item. So for the most popular item, what we'll be doing is using a group by. So group by is like a pivot table where we mention at what level or what field do we need to aggregate the measures. So it is just a simple thing that I want to look at uh, all the items and number of orders does it have. So what I'll be doing, I'll be using a group by function of a data frame. So if you notice, this is mentioned as data dot group by. So this is the data frame function. And I'm mentioning at what level do I want to aggregate the field? So what I'll do, I'll mention that group by, and then I'm mentioned round bracket. In that round bracket, I'll be mentioning the field. So if I'm mentioning any one field, I'll be mentioning it in a square bracket. If I have multiple fields to mention, then I can mention it in two square brackets, which will be coming uh, in some time. So here, what I've done, I've just uh, get got the order ID. So what I'm doing, doing here is grouping it by item name. And then after the bracket, I can mention the field which I want to uh, use as a measure. And then I can I have to mention which aggregation is this. So here I can measure aggregation like sum, max, min, and then use those. So here, uh, when I do this, uh, use the statement, I get this complete result in a format of data of integer. So it is basically an integer kind of format table, which I'm getting this, which is uh, very difficult to use because I won't be able to do any other further calculations on top of it. Let's say I, if I want to sort this data and I, I won't be able to do it. So what I do, I'll just convert this int to a data frame again. So to convert that to into a data frame, I'll be using a function called reset index. So what will happen, I'll just convert this into a data frame and I have the item name and the order ID over here. Now my next step here is just to sort this order ID in a descending order. So in that way, I can get the most popular item. So what I'll do here, I'm just using the same, reusing the same function and adding a sort values. So sort values takes in two uh, important input elements here. So in the bracket, I mentioned by, which is on which column do I want to sort it to? And then there's a flag ascending, which is always true by default. So if I want to put it in a descending order, I have to mention ascending equal to false. So in, in this statement, finally, I get to know that French fries is the most popular item with eight orders. Now let's go to the next question. Which partner had the most orders? So what we'll be doing is we'll be using the same function which we've used earlier and we'll just reuse that function. So now if you notice here, we have just reused the same function and changed few things. Like instead of, uh, instead of the item name, we have used the partner name. Instead of, uh, okay, we have kept the order ID as the same because we are using the order ID itself. And instead of count, we are using n unique. So n unique will help us to count the unique number of items unique number of order IDs. Now we'll be using the same function again, and we'll just change this partner name to brand name to get the most popular brand. So we do the same thing. We use the same function. We use data to group by, and then we use the brand name, and then we use the N unique. Now let's look at the next question. Which kitchen takes the longest and the shortest time? Put, let's say, time difference in pandas. And uh, when I usually do this, uh, we can go, for a stack overflow answer. Why? Because this will help us to get the answers from the community. So usually people post their questions over here and we get the answers over here. So by going through these answers, I found this answer to be pretty uh, 
simple and easy to understand. So I'll be discussing this answer over here. So in this answer, what I'm doing here is that they have mentioned what is uh, the T1 over here. They have mentioned PD2 date time. And they have they mentioned time one and time two, and then they're just taking time PD dot time delta T2 minus T1 dot seconds. And then they are dividing it by 3600 to get in hours and 60 to get it in minutes. So we'll be using the same thing over here. So if you notice here, we have the first row and we are taking T2 over here. And this is the T2 uh, in our script, Python script. And it is taking into consideration this prepared date, which is over here, which is 151 uh, time. And here we have the order date, which is as T1. So we're taking the order date and the zero uh, row, and then this is the order date, and we subtract this date and get 10.33. But now if you notice, this function is only applicable for the row record. So if I want to uh, subtract one time with other time, I can use this function. But if I want to use this at scale, let's say the complete column, I want to change it. I have to apply a loop to go into each record and calculate this. If I don't want to use this and use this function across the complete pandas data frame, I have to use something, some different yeah. function. So in apply, what happens? There are two important elements in apply. Apply basically means that we are using, applying a function across the complete data frame. And then we are mentioning the axis, which is zero or uh, one. So zero is for index. Index means basically we are applying this uh, function to each column, or if we put it as one, it will apply at each row. So here what we are doing, we are using the same function. So if you notice, we are using uh, data as a data frame, and then we are using apply and using lambda function. So, so data, which is a complete data frame is initialized as X, Lambda X is mentioning that this complete data frame is passing to X. Now in this X, and then we put colon function, we use the function here. So now what we're doing is we're just calculating the time delta between X prepared date minus X order date. And here we don't need to mention the row number which we are taking because this will apply this function across all the rows of that data frame. So we are initializing data to X and this X is being used in the function. And then we are mentioning access equal to one because we want to apply this function to each row. So in that way, if you notice the output which we're getting is uh, a float object for each row of that uh, data frame. And then we, what we do is we initialize a new column. So we use data time diff equal to this complete function. So what happens is complete all the values are calculated and then stored into a data time diff, uh, which is the new column which we're creating in the data frame. Now, uh, coming back to the question, which kitchen takes the longest and the shortest time? So now first what we did is we calculate the time difference between uh, prepare date and the order date for each order, created a new column. And now we are just grouping it by kitchen name to get the final values. So if you notice over here, using the same, reusing the same uh, function over here. So we are just using group by kitchen name. So first thing we are putting the brand name. Instead of brand name, we're using kitchen name. Instead of the order ID, we're using the time difference. Instead of n unique, we don't want the unique number of items, but we want a mean, which is an average over here. And then we are sorting it into an ascending order. So we don't use any ascending equal to false because ascending is by default true. And now instead of data, what we'll be doing is we'll be using, so that sample set, what we are taking, we are taking only kitchen name and the time difference of from that particular thing. So if you notice, if you want two columns, we are mentioning it in two square brackets. And then we are using drop duplicates, which is a inbuilt function of a data frame in order to remove all the duplicate records. So if I have order, if I have given one order, I'll have three records, but I don't want three records. I just want the kitchen name and the time difference of it. So I just get those two values and then remove the duplicates from there. And once I remove the duplicate, this whole thing, data uh, kitchen till drop duplicates will become 
uh, will be coming in place of my data. So this complete thing will be coming in place of my complete uh, data over here. And then I'll use the group by function. And then once I use this, I'll be getting an output such as this. So I'll be getting a kitchen name. And this will, these are the average uh, time reference for each kitchen. Now uh, we'll be moving to the next question. So in this question, what we're doing is, how much time does the most popular item take to prepare in different kitchen location? So if you notice in uh, our data set, we have for each record, we have uh, three, three rows. So now if I want to know the time difference for a particular item, I won't get it because I'm doing the time difference from the prepared date till order date. And this is the preparation time for all the three things. So I won't be getting the time to prepare for each particular item. So here, what we are doing is we are taking and uh, what we'll be doing is we'll using the time difference and divided by the number of items. And why do we do that? This way we'll be getting what is the average amount of time to prepare for each item per order. So for this, we'll need items per order which is uh, for each order, how many number of items do we have? And we'll be dividing the time difference with the items per order. So we need these two fields over here. So for this purpose, what we'll be doing is, we'll be calculating the items per order. So the first thing is we are taking a group by of order ID and the item name we are using it as an aggregation is a count. So we know how many items are there in each order ID. And then what we do is we are re renaming that item names to items per order. So rename is a inbuilt function of a data frame itself where I can use which column name I want to mention. I want to mention it in a particular order, old column name, colon, new column name. And then if I want to rename it itself in items itself, I can mention in place equal to true. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be joining this order ID and the item names to our initial table so that we get the item uh, items per order in that new table. So we'll be basically joining that table. So for joining the table, we use a function called merge in pa uh, pandas, which is pd.merge. And if I want to know more in detail about any function, what I can do is I can mention a question mark uh, before the function use so that I can understand which, uh, what does that function do and what all inputs does it need. So here the major inputs for a join is uh, these few options. Like I want to mention, which is the left table, which is the right table, how I want to join both the tables and then on what keys do I want to join. So these two, uh, these five fields are pretty important for my join uh, function. So now we'll be using the same function for joining the two tables. So here, what we're doing is we're creating a new table data with underscore item count, and then we are doing pd.merge. So on the left side, I have uh, data, which is the earlier table. Items is a new table, which I've calculated by items per order. How is the join, which I want to mention? So I can be have three, uh, three options like in a left, right. Um, left on, I mentioned the key, primary key, which is in data. And then right on, I mentioned the foreign key, which is in the left uh, other table. And then I join it and then I get this new column, which is items per order. So data with item count is a new table, which has this additional uh, field. Now, after I get items per order, what I'll be doing is I'll just be dividing time difference with item per order to get the new field over here and I get time per item per order. So I get to know for each particular item in that particular order, how much in general time it takes for preparing that. So now finally, if I have the time, I just have to reuse that function in order to uh, get the final summary. So what I'll be doing is I'll, I just used First, I'm filtering using a LOC function. So LOC is a uh, function inbuilt in data frame, 
if I want to filter for any item. So what I do the is I just mentioned the data frame dot loc and in the bracket I need to mention what I need to filter. So I just mentioned that in that particular data with item count, I want to filter for item name, which should be equal to French fries. And this complete data set will filter the data and then be used in the group by function. So now I'm grouping it by kitchen name, time per item per order, and I'm taking the mean of it. And then with this, I'm uh, sorting the values by time per item per order in a descend ascending order and I'm getting the bill output. Now distribution of the final bill by brand. In this function, what I do, I'm taking the unique records of brand name, order ID and final bill. And I'm taking these three fields and I'm just removing the duplicates. So what I'm doing is for each brand, for each order, what is the final bill? Because I'll get repeated records. So I'm just taking these three columns and dropping the duplicates so that for each brand, I can get different order ID and their final bill. And next step is basically I'll be using this complete data set to uh, and group it and create a pivot table on top of it to find what is the brand name, final bill and calculate the sum of it. And then I'll be resetting, uh, sorting these values by final bill and then it's on a descending order. So this way I get the final bill by brand and I'll here I've understood how to use LOC for filtering any data, how to use uh, merge for joining different things, how to use group by for creating pivot tables or grouping it by different uh, fields and then summarize my values over here.